What makes this city so special is its distinct neighborhoods, which themselves make up the integral parts of New York City. In this new series, I'm going to take you on an exclusive tour of a new neighborhood in each episode and share with you everything you need to know before visiting the greatest city in the world. So in this video, we are touring my home neighborhood of Chelsea. Big thanks to Dyson for sponsoring a part of this video. Chelsea is a neighborhood on the west side of the borough of Manhattan. The neighborhood boundaries are 14th Street to the south, the Hudson River to the west, 6th Avenue to the east, and right around 34th Street Hudson Yards to the north. It's 0.7 square miles, and it's home to over 38,000 people. The neighborhood, it's primarily residential, with a mix of tenements, apartment blocks, city housing projects, townhouses, and recently a few new luxury developments. The area has a large LGBTQ population, and Chelsea is known as one of the centers of the city's art world, with over 200 galleries in the neighborhood. Today, we're gonna tour through some of my favorite go-to spots and share with you what life is like living in Chelsea, Manhattan. To start the day, head to Variety Coffee for a top-notch cup of joe. It's hands down my favorite coffee shop in the area. Variety is a neighborhood staple for the early morning commuters who need that extra boost on their way to the office and also the creative, looking for a nice space to work from. Or if you want, get your coffee to go and head off to breakfast. My personal favorite for an amazing breakfast is Citizens of Chelsea. The best Australian breakfast that you can get in New York City, right here. Now Australians, they know how to do their breakfast right. Citizens is a modern Aussie breakfast spot in the heart of Chelsea. The interior has a very open industrial feel with ample seating, lots of natural light flooding in, and tons of plants hanging from the ceilings, giving life to the space. You actually can't go wrong with all day breakfast. My go-to at Citizens is the Avo Toast Smash with two poached eggs and a black coffee. They have their own spin on the Avo Toast. They use a red beet puree and pistachio nuts on the side. Citizens is that spot in New York City. Whenever I have someone from out of town visiting, I always bring them to Citizens because the standard of food here, every time you come, tastes exactly the same. They are so consistent with their breakfast, and that's huge. I mean, I am a breakfast guy, and to have an Avo and Toast like this to start your day in New York City. Now you've had the best breakfast of your life. You're all fueled up and ready for the day. Next, I recommend heading to the High Line. The High Line is the most unique park that New York City has to offer. The reason that the High Line is raised is because it used to be a freight rail line, which stopped running in 1980. Almost 30 years later, in 2009, it reopened as a public park transforming an eyesore into a sprawling greenery of urban design and ecology, cutting all the way through Chelsea, becoming an icon of contemporary landscape architecture. The High Line is just about a mile and a half long, extending from Gansvoort Street in the Meatpacking District through Chelsea to the recently opened Hudson Yards. Comment down below if you want the next neighborhood tour to be at Hudson Yards. The High Line is actually one of my favorite places in the entire city. The tourists and the people who come here are on just a different level of relaxed. You come to the High Line to stroll, to sip your morning coffee, to just enjoy nature surrounded by the city in Chelsea. It's also one of the best places in the entire city to just sit and people watch. Next up on my list is the world famous Chelsea Market. Chelsea Market is an enclosed urban food court, shopping mall, office building, and television production studio all in one. It's a quintessential New York experience where you'll encounter people from all walks of life. It's actually pretty overwhelming, just the sheer amount of restaurants and choices, but definitely stay and grab a meal at one of the many incredible world famous restaurants. My biggest tip is to come here on an off day. It's currently 9:10 on a Monday morning. There's no one here besides the people who are going to work because a lot of major companies have offices in this building. My biggest piece of advice is to come here on an off day, a Monday, a Tuesday, avoid the weekends like the plague, have this place pretty much all to yourself. If you're looking to slow things down and get a bit introspective, Chelsea has no shortage of world-class galleries, many of which can be found along 10th Avenue. My personal favorites are the Taglia Latella, which offers modern and contemporary art, specializing in the pop and street art movement. Another right next door is the Chase Contemporary Gallery. If you're looking to clear your head, there are literally so many different galleries in Chelsea that you could spend hours in one and be the only person in there. 
The galleries are free and all the art is for sale, so bring your checkbooks. After hours of exploring the High Line and the galleries and all that Chelsea has to offer, wind down with some grub at the iconic Empire Diner. It's a classic Art Deco spot relaunched with upgraded spins on American dishes, coffee, and cocktails. This is the spot to do breakfast for dinner. I have an omelet, some potato fries, bread, veggies. My biggest piece of advice, like all the places in Chelsea, come here on an off-peak day, off-peak hours. It's Monday, it's not that busy, it's kind of mellow, nice and slow. It's only the locals. I was here last Sunday, the line was around the block. Now you may be wondering what a typical apartment is like in Chelsea. And if you've been subscribed to the channel for a while, you've seen my apartment many, many times. It's a small studio, but it's all I really need, since I'm usually out filming and working on travel projects. But one of the most essential aspects of making a small studio actually livable is making sure you keep it clean. A huge thanks to Dyson for sponsoring this part of the video. The brand new Dyson V11 is tiny but mighty. Perfect for a cozy studio with little storage space. Now it's got a whole bunch of really smart features like dynamic load sensing, high torque cleaner head, and a digital display. Dyson, I am impressed. I thought my apartment was pretty clean, but this looks like a dirty fur ball kind of crawled up into the vacuum. The coolest thing about the dynamic load sensing is that the machine automatically adapts power between different floor types. So I can easily switch from my thick shag carpet to the hardwood floors. And since my building's pretty old, the outlets are limited, but the V11 is cord free, so I can use it anywhere. Visit Dyson.com for more info. Thanks again to Dyson for sponsoring this part of the video. I hope you enjoyed episode number one of the new series. Comment down below which neighborhoods you want me to tour next. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe to my channel for more high quality New York City content. And with that, I will see you in the next video. Hey. Let's go. Back.